Today we will be mixing a, a metal track with the Wave Studio Rack. Why? Because it's cool. That's why. Let's dive into the DAW and see what we can do. So here I have a session of a Dutch metal band called Meadows. Uh, I did some preparations like creating the key, f key spikes. Uh, if you want to know what key spikes are, check out Toby Allen's video at True North Audio, which I will link below. Um, I also added some samples and did some basic uh, gain staging and panning. Uh, and I transposed the gain staging to the Blue Cat Audio gain plugins so I can keep my faders at zero for automation. So let's see what we have here. <laughs> Well, as you can hear, it's sounding pretty raw, and there's all kinds of nasty masking and other stuff going on. So let's see what we can do with the studio rack. Let me open up a mixer. And usually I start with the snare. As you, as you can hear, there's some bleed in it. So, oh, let's try and fix that. Uh, I think everyone knows the Pro MB thing where you can do multi multi stepped expanding. Um, and we can also do that with the studio rack using the simple C1. Oh, uh, yeah, this one. No, the other one. I always get those two messed up. Damn it. This one. Yes. Uh, I have an expander preset I made myself, which I like to use as a starting point. I've soloed this band here just to find the fundamental of the snare. that's pretty clean and now we can add this to like the main tone I think and the cool thing we can do now is use the output of, th of the fundamental as a sidechain input on this one uh, it's rack 2 so just like the problem B you're shifting the listen input Just make the release shorter so you don't get the high end. Pssst. And then we'll do the same thing here for the top. That cleaned up pretty nice. 
and then there is also this other really really cool trick <coughs> uh, by Bob Burchell where you put like an extra channel of the snare put one out of phase so now we'll hear absolutely nothing and we'll use the Odyssey one uh, this one Put it in a sidechain mode. I think it should be around here. Yeah. And we'll compress it like crazy. make the low end not be out of phase again so the, the low end can pass through easier you can hear we've taken out a little of the top end hiss and then we'll do some tone shaping it pretty fast. Take a take out a bit of the boxiness. it a little bit so that clean up pretty nice guess we'll just Copy it over to the other snare. There's a little bit more of the top end hiss coming through. Snare 2 done, let's do the snare bottom and I uh, like to use the key spikes for this and the full range expander. I have the care snare key spike here. Um, oh, turn on the side chain, yes. And now it's listening to the key spike. So and add a little bit of distortion. nice <coughs> all right 
let's do some kick first before we get into the snare bus this is the inside mic I don't think it needs much just Tone shaping. And maybe some compression. that'll do and we have the outside and we just need to fill out the lower mids a bit maybe just could make it a little bit tighter that's it I also have a sample but I think It's pretty typewritery, that's fine. Oh, there it is. So let's hear the kick snare together. Kick is way too clicky. And I also like to have some distortion on it. I need to take out that clickiness a bit. Yeah, that's better. <coughs> and maybe add some parallel compression, which is always nice. And I like to use. two parallel compression chains which oh, which serve different purposes so let's solo the 1176 This will add some depth and length, and now we'll add some more punchiness. Okay, you 
initially, I think I was down minus 12. This can go even down more, down more. It's becoming a little boomy. And I think we need to control the low end a bit on the sustain. is punching through nicely now we need to work on the snare a bit um, yeah yes this is L no maybe not maybe just first add oh we need to do some parallel stuff. Oh. Parallel. And on the snare, I do the same thing with the CLA and the DVX. sustain of the snare which is sick and then we do the DBX minus 12 It also needs some more EQ. That's a bit too much. Yeah, high bass is always good. bringing some overheads I know my room has some nasty build up around six, 2 to 3k usually so to even out everything a bit. Um, oh. Oh.
sense of the harshness a bit, but let's add some saturation before that to make it a bit more top endy. Alright. The thing I also like to do on overheads is like add in a parallel reverb so I can compress it more and I have this like this room thing I like I'll just bring that in cool you can hear like getting the shells having more depth while the overheads themselves don't change that much and now we'll just run it through like pretty brutal compression Everything's a bit bigger now. Let's pull in the rooms. <coughs> and like the rooms have the same thing with the two to three K. take out a little bit of the top and for the rooms I like to have a, a dual mono oh need to take this to the left and the right and I usually go for the pie but I want to control them at the same time so there's a neat little trick we can do here and that's linking these buttons to macros what we do this is always the fastest and 3, 2, 1 And now I can control both at the same time using the macro. And there's something weird with the left right thing that you need to pan them afterwards. Otherwise you get a, like a processed left and an unprocessed right and a unprocessed right and a processed right. It's, it's weird, but you need to pan them if you want to do like a dual mono thing. to get it into the toms and I'll go through those pretty fast we need to find the tom section solos and just add 
three live tones. And for the sake of expediency, I'll just use my shell external key preset, which has a C6 triggered by the key spike, uh, which you can hear like this. Those ticks are the spikes to trigger the compression or expansion in this case. So I have the L1. To keep it in check a bit. And just do the same here. Let's check the Tom's bus, which has the original shells and the samples coming in. process this in a dual mono way as well. to the drum bus and then we'll move on maybe we'll just need to add in the bass as well just to get some stuff together
bass kind of sucks. I think that we could use a bit more mid range on the DI. get a bigger section back together so we can have a little bit more contour to have a more nasty distortion in the top end um, and the one I like to use is this one uh, let's put the EQ before the preamp uh, mess this up There's a bit of nastiness going on, let me see. We'll always run it through the bluey. Um, I th think we could probably <laughs> add a multi band split to give the low end a little bit more space when the kick hits. So let's add a key spike kick. Use the C1. Um, this one. Yes. No. God damn it. I always pick the wrong one. This. Use the side chain. Oh, need to turn it on.
like anything always limit the bass like a maniac some guitars I like to use the SSL to shape my guitars as well. the low end a bit um. I like to keep the range at six This part also takes out a lot of the harshness. I think I'll just copy this over. It'll be fine for now. I won't do the heavy lifting on the bus. the whistle and then we'll add some distortion magic like doing a multiband again and beef up those lower mids there we wrote which is a nice saturator <laughs> everything more forward 
and then we'll do another nice trick and we'll just use the sides on this parallel chain and like, like make it really messed up aggro um, API it's so cool you can uh, like do all these weird you can do like parallel in a parallel or multiband in a parallel and whatever um, and we need another API and that's the 558 we're gonna go like ape shit on this attack super aggro and we'll just blend that in and finally tuck everything in with oh the X some vocals some cool effects H delay is becoming chaos minus six and then a compression to duck the delay when the focal is going on we'll just use god damn the wrong one again this well you just use the back one the dry focal as a compressor input. <laughs> Let's 
had some doubler I just I used the default basic doubler seems to work fine so let's see what we made of this Seems cool to me. Well, that's it. Like a basic intro, uh, mixing some metal track with the studio rack. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe and then uh, click the bell. You know the drill. Peace out.